when I looked over the schedule, Rick wrote something that uh, I wasn't the most fond of. I've always been honest with Rick. And he wrote about the Shabbat as the observance of the Jewish uh, ceremony or the Jewish Shabbat. And I, I don't believe that's how, how the Word of God reveals it. If you look sometime, for example, at the book of Leviticus in chapter 23, it speaks about the Sabbath day and all these festivals. And the word there is Moadai, my appointed days. They belong to God, and God wants to share them with humanity. Now, many of these festivals, like Passover and Pentecost and such, they commemorate something that took place, something that God did, or they teach us something that is going to happen, something that prepares us for a future. For example, the Apostle says in Colossians chapter 2 that these things are a shadow of that which is coming. Now, if you have some Bibles like the NIV, and if you know me, I'm not a big fan of the NIV, it changes it. And one of the purposes, I believe, of this conference and one of the purposes of, of the Bible study company, it's not a, a profit-making endeavor. It is an endeavor to encourage people to get as close as they can to scriptural truth. And not just learn it, but to apply it to their life so that they might live, and I hope you know where I'm going, that they might live a praiseworthy life, a life that God is pleased with. And therefore, in the scripture from Colossians 2, and I'm speaking about verse 16 and 17, it says, these are a shadow of things which are coming. So the more we know about God's appointed times and the Sabbath is one of them, the more we know about what's going to happen, not just what took place, but what will take place. And also it says there that it's a shadow. If there's a shadow, something must pass that shadow. And we know what that is. It says, and the substance, that is the body, is Messiah. So the more we understand these appointed days of the Lord that he wants to share with us, the more we understand about the Messiah, the King of Kings, and the more we understand about his kingdom. Now, the Sabbath, we go back, and I'm going to read in a few minutes a prayer. It's actually scripture, but it's done as a prayer on the Sabbath day. And that is that the Sabbath predates basically, right, all of humanity. Because God created the heavens and the earth and the fullness thereof in six days. And if we read carefully Genesis chapter 1, what was the last uh, part of his creation? Humanity. It says that he created them male and female. And we know that the last thing was man and then the next thing was Shabbat. Now, we do have these festivals for commemoration of things. We have a, a day because of an evening and a morning. The sun rising and setting. We have a month, the rotation or the cycle of the moon. We have a year, the rotation of the sun. But when we look at the Sabbath day, every seven days, the only reason we have that is because of creation. This six days and the one, and it's a message not to a particular group of people, one ethnic group, but rather it's for humanity. So I wanted to emphasize that. Secondly, it's, it's not Shabbat yet, but that's okay. Because according to the rabbis, and we're not under them, but we can learn sometime from all people, right? Receiving the Sabbath early is a good thing. Being early is a good thing. If we were to go to meet a king, and that's what really worship is about, we wouldn't want to just meet that king at, at the last moment or be a few minutes late. So when we worship, we want to be on time. We want to be early. And therefore, it's always appropriate to, to welcome the Shabbat. And likewise, we can always drag it out. 
because it's a good thing. We shouldn't be like one prophet said of the people. They're checking now. They didn't have watches back then, but it's an, an expression. They want the Sabbath. They look and say, when are these new moons? When are these Sabbaths over? Because they didn't enjoy God. Well, if you truly know God, his character and experience his love, you're not going to want to hurry through the things that, that he has. We're going to want to enjoy them patiently, slowly, and being privileged to push out all the things of this world that we might focus on God. And that's really the purpose of this conference. I, I'm glad that we have an intimate group. Now, many of you know that we've done a, a conference in Virginia for about, I think, five years. This was the sixth year. The hostess of that, a good friend, she died unexpectedly, Patsy Akerich. And we met also in a hotel, in a room much like this. And it was neat. Some of you have been to that conference, like Brian and Patricia and a few others. Uh, where's Joe and Shahe and such? But we would kind of make an L. And it was just a, a nice, close group. And I hope that's what this is, that we feel free to interrupt, to ask questions as we go through the Word of God, especially Rick's uh, uh, broadcast when he goes through things, that you're able to, to ask questions and learn what a valuable tool the Bible Study Company is. I'm going to ask you if you take out your Bibles and look with me to uh, two pieces of Scripture. And... We're going to look beginning in the book of Genesis, and then we're going to turn to Exodus. But look, if you would, to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. I'm just going to read the first uh, three verses. And this is usually what is said in every household that uh, from a Jewish standpoint, this is what the sages instructed, but it should be read in every household. Genesis chapter 2. Verses 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to read it, not sing it, right? Read it. Read it in Hebrew, and then we'll translate it. Which means, and the heavens and the earth and all their hosts were completed. Verse 2. And God, he completed on the seventh day his work, which he did. And he, your Bibles will say rested or ceased. It's simply the verb form of the term Sabbath. So he did the Sabbath himself on the seventh day from all of his labor, which he did. And God, and this is important, because many people, and I hear so many say, well, you know, for me, Tuesday is more convenient to, to take a day off to rest, or Friday or whatever it may be. But when we look here, it's not about rest in the traditional sense. It's not about getting plenty of sleep and such and, and not exerting yourself, no. The term Shabbat, the key word is menucha, which means to lay something in the right place. It's a repositioning. That's what that word rest literally means. And so it says, verse 3, our last verse, and God blessed the seventh day, not just the day of your choosing, the seventh day. And not only did he bless it, but he sanctified it. He put that word, he made it holy, or he put holiness within it. Now, holiness, and I say this a lot, it's related to the purpose of God. So it's when we acknowledge and we apply Sabbath truth to our life, not legalistically, but being led by the Spirit when we do that. We're going to have a better understanding of the purposes of God, what is holy to Him. So He sanctified it, for in it He rested from all of His labor, which He created, which God created to do. Now that's odd. In fact, I don't know if your Bibles, when you're looking through the English translations, how that literally is translated, 
But it says, and he rested, he did the Sabbath from all of his labor, which he created, God created. And at the end it says, la sot, to do. And that has so much wisdom because that word la sot, to do, it implies something. As we do the Sabbath, as we acknowledge it and apply it to our life, there's an outcome. And that is that we're prepared to do, to make, to achieve the purposes of God. And that's why when we look at the book of Genesis, we don't see that, that the Sabbath is a reward. If you work hard six days, then you get a day off. That's not what we see biblically, right? We see that before man did anything, man was created. I'm using man collectively, male and female. And the first thing that they did, it was a kind of preparation for life, was they experienced with God the Sabbath day. Now, the last scripture I want to turn to in this uh, uh, acknowledgement of the biblical Shabbat, the Lord's, Lord's day. Look with me, if you would, to Exodus and chapter 31, Exodus chapter 31, and we're going to begin with verse 16 and just read two verses. Again, I like to read it in Hebrew. And this is one that uh, I'm not going to impose upon my wife, but uh, at our home we sing it. But we're not going to sing, no singing this, this weekend, right? None. Okay. So Exodus chapter 31, verse 16. Veshamru vane Yisrael et hashabbat la sot et hashabbat le doratam barit olam. Beni uven bane Yisrael ot hi le olam ki sheshet yamim asadonai et hashemayim viet haaretz u bayom hashvi'i shavat vaynafash, which means, and the children of Israel, they kept the Sabbath. To do the Sabbath, and that's interesting, to do, to do the Sabbath throughout their generations as an eternal covenant. Now, that word eternal, it's an adjective, and it's used more often than not in regard to the kingdom. So we could see that it's just not an everlasting king, uh, covenant, but a kingdom covenant. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested, vainafash, which means, and he was, maybe the way you translate it is, he was refreshed. It, it touched the very being of God. And the sages of old said this, if the Sabbath, it touched the very essence of God, the, the word is nephesh, which for us usually it's translated a soul. So if it touched the soul of God, imagine what it can do for you and me. So even Messiah taught that we were not made for the Sabbath, but the Sabbath was made that is God provided it for his people, not a particular ethnic group, but for his covenant people, for a kingdom people. So the Sabbath, it is a good thing, one that, that ought to be acknowledged and Sabbath truth ought to be applied to our life in order that we might reflect what, what we've studied about and that is the holiness and the glory of God. To that we'll say, Amen.